I'm ready for the next four years because I've got my crystal ball and I can see what's going to happen. First, over the next few months, pundits will scream about the fiscal cliff. That's a series of tax increases and budget cuts that will automatically go into effect January 1st unless Congress works out a deal. Will they? Yes, I can see it in here. Politicians will meet and then they'll hold uh, press conferences and fret and predict disaster and then they'll reach a deal right before the end. It won't solve much, it'll just postpone the reckoning, but they'll congratulate themselves and the media will move on to something else. America, however, will continue to go broke. Am I too cynical? No, it's probably worse than that, says my next guest, Congressman Ron Paul. Congressman, predict the future. Long term, the future looks pretty good. A lot of people are waking up and know that uh, what we have today isn't workable. But on the short run, the people in charge aren't going to admit it. They're not going to admit that we're bankrupt and that they won't admit that we're on the verge of a major, major change in our society. So they'll keep putting it aside. And uh, but then we'll eventually probably destroy the dollar or have a dollar crisis where we'll be forced to revamp and, and change our system of financing. But it could be pretty big. I mean, I mean, uh, I think it could, uh, won't be anything quite as bad as like when the Soviet system collapsed, but a lot of change would have to come. Because I think the true bankruptcy would mean that we no longer can maintain an empire around the world, and we no longer can maintain promises of entitlements of $222 trillion, so we have to face up to reality. But I think I agree with you. Uh, don't expect uh, all the solutions to come on January 1st. They're going to have some doctored up proposal and people will announce it and the stock market may go up. But ultimately, we will have to face up to, you know, the excessive spending and the excessive size of government, but uh, not for a little while yet. Though that sequestration law on January 1st was designed to acknowledge the politicians' unwillingness to make tough cuts. Here's how Jim Engel of Fox reported it. The fiscal cliff was crafted to be so distasteful, officials would do any and everything to avoid it. So you don't think they'll say, gee, we don't want to cut uh, this money from the military, domestic spending, we're finally going to cut entitlements, make some real decisions. They assume that they made it so bad that they wouldn't accept it, but I don't think they did anything. They're not even talking about cuts. They're talking about cutting, you know, a trillion dollars over 10 years, a hundred billion dollars, and they're not talking about real cuts. They're talking about cuts in baseline budgeting. Let me stop you. Explain baseline budgeting. And I hate it when you politicians talk that way because no person who's normal understands that. What you mean is that <laughs> If I'm going to cut, it means I spend less next year. When you guys do it, it means? It means that uh, we have already written into the next 10-year budget automatic increases. So if you're proposing, let's say, uh, a, a billion, $10 billion increase for next year and you cut it down to nine, they say, they're cutting 10%. But they're not cutting anything. They're only increasing it nine billion dollars instead of ten billion dollars. So it's all it's it's done on purpose so that people get confused and that cuts don't mean anything. Cuts mean only nibbling away at the proposed increases, and that's why that's the reason nothing ever happens. And they've got away with this for a long time because both sides, whether liberals or conservatives, they had different reasons they wanted to spend money, and there was a lot of wealth in the country, and they usually could get get along with it. Okay, we'll raise uh, milk subsidies subsidies and tobacco subsidies and we'll vote for you one versus the other. But now the Treasury's bare, the country's bankrupt, they won't admit it, and that's why there's so, uh, so much anger and frustration because it's hard to divvy up loot when there's none left to divvy up. Thank you, Congressman Paul. Uh, the focus on the media this 